Ho! This is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. And we're back with the Sanjian ATS 404, excuse me, 405. And we did an initial uh, look at it in a previous video, and today we're going to go over some of, not all, but some of the new features that this radio presents in this size radio. Now these features are not new new, but you don't always find them in a radio this small and this least expensive. So we're going to go into a couple of things. I printed out some of the pages from the manual. You can find this manual online. You just go to Google and do a search on Sajin ATS-405 and you can find a PDF of the manual for this radio. And uh, let me go to another page here. And you print it out, <laughs> it prints out in pretty big font, which is good for my show because it makes it easier to read. But it makes for a lot of printing, it's like 35 pages. So I didn't print out the whole manual, I just print out some key areas that I want to touch on today. Now, trying to do um, a demo of, of some of these functions may prove to be difficult because the conditions for doing them may not be ideal right now. It's Saturday morning, uh, July 11th, and it's uh, 6.52 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time here in Florida. And of course we're going to look at shortwave. It has AM and FM in shortwave. Now, along those lines, somebody said, well, that's too bad it doesn't have long wave. Well, let me show you something here in the manual. This is, and I don't know if I was going to show up, this is the display and all the things that could be displayed. And right here is LW. Here's FM, SW, medium wave, MW, and meter. And right there is long wave. So it's possible this radio could have long wave capabilities and they just didn't implement it or maybe I don't know why but it looks like it could have long wave capabilities because it does have an indicator that you're in the long wave band. Now maybe there's some hidden sequence of buttons you hit and it goes in the long wave and maybe the performance is just not that good in long wave so they said yeah we're not going to tell anybody about that feature so anyway, that's that's just kind of something that caught my eye. There's a lot of things that this thing displays here. Um, let's see, some of them I may have mentioned, may have mentioned or not mentioned in the previous one. Here is an indication that you have soft mute turned on, I guess, or off, depending on whether it's illuminated or not. Here is again. I try to zoom in. There is a little bandwidth indicators, so it's it's three overlapping, almost like triangles, but they're not triangles to indicate how wide the bandwidth is that you've selected. And I think I mentioned everything else. Of course, there's the alarms, and there is the sleep timer function. So it's got that. I don't think I mentioned that in the previous show. So anyway, let's go on. So the first thing I decided we should look at is the squelch option. And I'll try to illustrate it. Don't know how successful I'll be. And this it says this is the normal this is this is normal that background noise or static presents some degree at different locations. Either the wording is strange or my reading is strange. I say my reading is strange. And it says, it is best to set the squelch level as low as possible in order not to miss any weak transmissions. Well, as I've said in the past, typically for shortwave, you don't use squelch because you are looking for those weak transmissions. So you just don't use squelch. In a lot of radios, maybe a good percentage of the radios, shortwave radios I'm talking about, don't have a squelch control. So to me, I probably never use this. But anyway, it talks about 
Uh, you can either turn it on or turn it off. And then there's, let's see if you select, uh, and there's different levels, squelch levels, that you can select. It says the squelch level setting should be adjusted separately for different wide, different wave bands, excuse me. So, in the case of, uh, typically, on the FM band, you do have squelch acting. It just is normally there anyway. You just know turning it on, turn it off. Uh, <coughs> so, sorry I had to get a drink there. Um, so we can, we can just, we'll, yeah, what the heck, we'll give it a try. So let's turn the radio on. And we're going to turn to, we're in the shortwave band. And let's turn to WWV, so we'll direct tune. Very easy to direct tune. You just hit the frequency button down here, and you put in the number, and you hit the frequency button again. Uh, right now, band conditions aren't too good. I'm in my office again. I've got noise in the room. I'm using the built-in telescopic antenna. Right now, WWV on 10 megahertz is not too good. Usually this time of the morning, 5 megahertz is better. Let's try 5. Ooh, not much better. I can see right now, reception is not going to be too good this morning. Try 15. Yeah, nothing there. Well, let's see here. Um, try starting at 9 megahertz going up. Uh, surely I can find a station of some kind. Okay, even though I started 9 megahertz, which is not one of the meter bands, international broad... Okay, there we go. Now, this signal... And let me... Uh, it's time to zoom in here a little bit. I don't know why you guys didn't remind me to zoom in. Okay, so you can see right now we've got a signal that's three, four bars on this little S meter here. So therefore, I've got enough signal that I could put some squelch in and uh, keep the radio silent when it's below that level. I hope I said that correctly. So let's see what the manual says about doing that. Okay, it says press the squelch button. Press the squelch button. Okay. Now, it did, wouldn't it, does it say? Did it, oh, okay, yeah. Press, first you have to press and hold the mute button to use any of these sub mode buttons. So I'm going to have to press menu, which is over here. Press and hold it. And it flash, I mean, it goes to a blank screen. And I'll press. The one which is the sub mode is squelch. As you can see, it's off right now. So I can use the up and down tuning buttons. Change the level. There's one, two. And what's nice is it gives you an indication on the S meter or where the squelch will. Squelch. <laughs> Easy for me to say. <laughs> I did it so slow, it's, it's back out of the mode. So I got to push and hold menu again, hit squelch, and it gives you a numeric value that it's set at and a indication on the S meter. So it's set right now at three. I'm gonna I'm gonna move it down a little bit to two. Let me hold, push and hold this again. Squelch. And I'm gonna move it down to two. And so that indicates and then I can hit menu again and now it's set. So that in that now the squelch is set that a signal below two bars on the S meter will be squelched and you won't hear anything. So right now I've got three bars, so and I'm, so I'm hearing it. So and it's going all the way up to five bars. So to show you just as an illustration, and not that you would normally do this, 
I'm going to set that level, that squelch level, real high. And let's see if it squelches that signal. So we're going to hit menu, squelch, and I'm going to crank this up real high. Seven. I got it up to seven. So that's way up there. There's a whole bunch of signals you're going to miss. I'll hit menu again. Now it's at seven. My signal level right now is four bars. So I should not be getting any audio. You turn the audio up. And sure enough, I have no audio. So let's just try to put it in between there so we can kind of see it come and go when the signal level changes. And it's, it's going between four and five bars. So <clears throat> if I set it to five bars, I should be able to get the audio. And when it falls below five bars, the audio shall go away. So let's try that. So we're going to set it for five bars. Oh, it even does it real time. See there? So I, I can see what it does to that particular signal real time as I'm setting the level. <clears throat> Very good. Okay, I think that pretty well illustrates squelch. Again, I never use squelch on the, um, the Shoei band. Now, like I say, typically there's a squelch as a default in the FM band, and typically the squelch is turned off for the AM band. Now, I could, I would, so see it now, it's, it's, that I've got the level set right there at where this particular signal is. So it's squelching it, and sometimes it's getting, the signal's getting strong enough that it's, <clears throat> opening that squelch and letting you hear it. So that's, that function is working excellent. And and maybe even on short wave, ooh, touching the antenna with my finger helps, um, you may have a short wave broadcast that you listen to quite often and you only want to listen to it when it's strong. So you might use a squelch in that case and set it to a level that if it reaches that level, you know it's going to be a good, strong signal. You know you're going to be able to understand it. Below that, you don't want to hear this intermittent signal. But like I say, to me, I'm going to turn that squelch off right now. Like I say, I don't use it. So you just keep going down. You go past one and it's off. So now it's off. You've got audio all the time. You know, and as it said here, you set um, you set the squelch level setting should be adjusted separately for different wave bands. So AM, FM, shortwave. So that's the squelch. So we we're off to on a good start here. We got one of them pretty well demonstrated. Now probably go downhill. Okay, the next function that I mentioned before, let me zoom out so you can see the manual. Again, you can find this manual online. It's available, and you can download the manual and go through the entire manual. I'm not going through the entire manual. I'm just going through certain functions that are not unique to this radio, but are incorporated in this radio, and the question is, how well do they work? Okay, the next one I mentioned before was tuning mute and that's related to um, a function that some of the newer radios have not this particular feature but they do it automatically and what they do is when you're tuning to the band and I'm talking about shortwave here again and it gets applicable to other bands but we're specifically talking about shortwave when you're tuning you know, like I'm sitting here and I'm punching uh, this tuning button. There's no, no, even though the manual says there's a tuning knob, there is no tuning knob. You have to use these buttons to tune. So you're sitting here and you're going through various frequencies. Let me turn the volume up.
Okay, right now, as soon as as soon as it goes to the next frequency, it's going up by five kilohertz. The audio is there, so you don't lose the audio. Some other radios, some of the other newer radios, especially ones with uh, DSP, when you're tuning and you change frequency, the audio is muted for maybe only half a second, but it's enough for, at least for me, it drives me crazy because I have to change the frequency, I have to wait that half second, listen to the audio come back, and then see if there's a signal there. So when you're doing this, it drives you nuts because you know, you're not hearing anything until that one second or half a second has elapsed and the audio has come back. In this radio, they realize that people don't like that in the newer radios. So they gave you the option to turn that off. To me, I would always keep it turned off. So right now, it is turned off. And I'll show you turning it on what that does. Okay, so we hit the menu button. And then we hit the T mute button. And as you can see, it's off right now. See, so I'm going to turn it on. So it's on now. I'll hit menu. So now it's going to mute between tuning steps. So let's see what happens. I don't see much difference. There's, uh, I can see on some radios, there's a half a second. Now, it's it's hard to illustrate. Oh, how can I say this? What one thing that some radios, how they work? I'm not doing a very good job. This anyway, some radios, especially ones with a tuning knob, as you're rotating the knob. It's stepping through because it's not an analog with analog tuner. It's stepping through whatever the step increment is. Right now, it's not in fine tuning, so it's uh, five kilohertz. If you select fine tuning, which is it's now in fine tuning, it's one kilohertz. So other radios that have this muting problem. When you're stepping through, like I said, you have this delay of the audio. Now, I've turned off the tuning mute. Excuse me, I've turned it on. So, it should be muting as I'm doing this. But either it's not muting or it's very quick to respond. So I don't see a need for it on this radio. It doesn't have that really bad phenomenon of muting for a half a second. And you could detect a half a second of muting. It doesn't seem to have that. Let me go back and check to make sure I've got it turned on. Yeah, it's on. See, it's turned on. So either off or on. There's no uh, level. So I've got it turned on. And I don't really... I really don't detect that it's muting on it. Now, I can't... I can't tune any faster than I can pushing this button here. Which is pretty fast. It's faster than you'd want. I mean, as fast as you want. Now, let's see if there's any difference on the scanning with that function off or on. So I'm going to push and hold. Okay, for like three seconds, not three seconds, but for like three jumps in frequency, I heard the audio. And then it shut the audio down. Now that's normal what happens on radios when you're doing a scan, it normally mutes. I'm talking about digital radios like this. It normally mutes the audio when it's scanning, which is what you want. 
So let me just stop this. So I didn't see any difference there. So let me go back and turn the muting off. It's on. I'm going to turn it off. It's off. Now I'm going to scan. It does the same thing. So to me, to me, this radio doesn't suffer from the phenomenon where when you're tuning, it mutes the audio, audio, and it takes a half a second to a second to respond. It just it doesn't tell you have a problem. So even though it gives you this on-off feature, I don't see that it needs it. So so much for tuning mute. Next one is soft mute, and this is to reduce background noise during weak signals. And what these newer radios try to do that that have a DSP um, digital signal signal processor is they attempt to automatically mute the audio when the background noise level is reduced. And to me it doesn't work. To me it makes it worse because what happens if you get a weak signal this signal is trying to do this automatic squelching soft muting function and it just it, like on the PL880, it just does a terrible job. You know, and there is an option, it's it's not documented, but there is an option on the PL80 that you can attempt to turn it off. It helps a little bit, but it still doesn't fix the problem. So that's still a problem in the PL880, at least on the one I have, which is the 8820 version. Okay. So let's see what see what this does. I think it's another case where this radio doesn't have really have a problem with soft muting, but it gives you this option to turn it off. And I think I've got it turned off right now. So we need to go back and find the station. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's go down. Let it scan, see if we can find a station again. I can't remember if I've got squelch off or not. Yeah, it's not finding anything. This morning is not a good day for shortwave reception. Or at least this morning is not a good time for shortwave reception. I wish I could remember what that frequency was. I should have wrote it down. There we go. Okay, now one thing, let me turn this down for a second. One thing that you will notice is that even though I initially said in my previous show that this only scans the meter bands, what it actually does, and I mentioned it, but I want to reiterate it, what it does, if you're in the between a meter band, it will start scanning wherever you're at. And then it will scan up to the, or down, which, depending on which direction you go, the next meter band, and then it will scan that meter band, and then it's stuck in that meter band, will continue to scan just in that meter band. So I wish that was an option that you could say, scan a meter band or scan the entire shortwave band from 2.3 megahertz to 26 megahertz non-stop but you can't do that at least I haven't found a way of doing that so anyway back to soft mute so let's go and see if it's turned on okay it's turned off right now which is where I would normally leave it so we're going to turn it on and see if it makes that much of a difference we'll listen to this channel for a while let me make sure I got that squelch turned off. Yeah, it's turned off. 
allí en la casa de visita la señora de Estado, pues, ahí la tuvieron con más de tres horas de tenía. Okay, I'm touching the antenna to try to either increase or de decrease the uh, signal level. I don't think I'm going to have much su success at illustrating this soft mute function. I've got it on right now. Turn, push the antenna down. Okay, I've got the antenna collapsed. Okay, let's change that soft mute option. It's on. It was on. I'm going to turn it off. Now, right now, when I put my finger on this collapsed antenna, it com comes in pretty strong, but it's you could, you could hear that background noise there for a while. You got soft muting off. Okay, let's turn it back on. Yeah, you could definitely, right now, you could definitely tell it was a signal level real low. When I turn soft muting on, the noise level goes down. You got to enable it again. So listen closely. It's off. Let me zoom in. Oops, I got <laughs> Gotta be quick on that me on that menu item. Goes off. Okay, here we go. I I really. On that particular signal, I really couldn't tell the difference. Slight difference, and it seemed to to lower the noise level, the background noise level, when it was on. So to me, again, the radio seems to work fine with it off, so I just leave it off. So that's a couple of functions um, that are new to this brand of radio or to this particular radio, this pre the, the predecessor was the 404, it did not have these two functions. So there's a number of other ones, I'm up to uh, 30 minutes right now on my recording, so I think I will stop and I'll go over the other ones such as the AGC automatic gain control, and what's the next one is, uh, well, I can just talk about this one real quickly, this is the bandwidth options, of which there's three, and they're different for each uh, band, FM, short wave, and medium wave, and the one we're interested in is a short wave, three bandwidths, 4K, 2K, and 1K. I think I would have preferred to have more, obviously, but you don't get more, is I think I would have rather have this be 6K, 2K, and 1K. So anyway, that's the uh, the bandwidths that you can select from, and then they differ depending on what band you select. So I'm going to wrap up this video for now. The uh, other thing that I had printed out was the AGC, and I'll go over that in another um, video because that gets into a lot of discussion, so I say, and I love to ramble. So that'll probably be a half hour all by itself. So anyway, that's the show. If you enjoyed this show, 
please give me a thumbs up. Where's my thumb? There we go. Give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We're finally getting back on track with um, YouTube, and they're getting their subscriber numbers counts working again, and our subscribers count is finally starting to increase. So I hope they got that straightened out. But anyway, if you subscribe, you can select to get automatic notifications of when I posted a new video, making it easier to track my videos. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye.